So we start uh, to be today's session on uh, the topic for today is uh, granulomatous diseases of nose and paranasal sinuses. And uh, we have with us uh, today Dr. Seema Munga. Uh, she is uh, an associate professor at uh, the Hamdard Institute of Medical Sciences uh, and Research, uh, Delhi. And she's a rising star uh, in the ENT now. And uh, she has interest in um, research, academics, and has now more than 20 publications in uh, established peer reviewed journals. Uh, and uh, her interests are rhinology and uh, uh, head and neck surgery. And uh, so uh, we welcome Seema. And today's topic, uh, granulomatous diseases. Uh, uh, in India, we do see a uh, lot of uh, these granulomatous diseases. Some are not so common, but uh, the, the presentation at times is uh, typical, sometimes atypical, confusing us uh, with malignancies. So let's uh, uh, start today's topic. Seema, over to you. Thank you, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. I hope you all will find this uh, lecture interesting and Dr. Seema Munga. So first of all, uh, why am I taking this lecture? Why? Because as you all must have seen, you see patients with nasal polyp, patients with epistaxis, and patients with nasal obstruction. The first thought, first thought that comes to your mind is chronic sinusitis and nasal polyp. But this diagnosis of granulomatous disorder is very important to keep in mind. Why? Because first, some of them disorder, some of these disorders like Wegener's, they can prove to be lethal if you do not diagnose them within 48 hours. Second, if you do surgery in such patients like you think it is a polyp, like in this classical CT picture, the first thought that will come to your mind is mucosal hypertrophy here. Let's do endoscopic sinus surgery in these patients. No. First, if you are suspicious of such patients, do a complete physical examination, do a general physical examination, get a chest x-ray done, rule out joint pains, eye examination, and if you're suspicious, first take a biopsy. First take a biopsy. Like in this patient, this is the, it has a lot of crusting. So uh, keep these diagnoses in mind, basically. So what is a granuloma? You must have read in pathology. Granuloma is nothing but an organized collection of macrophages which become flattened and we call them epithelioid cells. Epithelioid cells are nothing but flattened macrophages which look like epithelium cells. And these epithelium fuse to form these multinucleated giant cells. All right. So, macro, so basically a granuloma has these giant cells, these epithelioid cells, lymphocytes and other inflammatory cells. So there are different types of granuloma we'll discuss later. So what all granulomatous condition you have to keep in mind? Granulomatous condition can be either due to an infection. Infection can again be bacterial, fungal, protozoal, or it can be non-infective. Non-infective as in it can be an inflammatory disorder. This neoplastic thing is a matter of debate. It was used to be under the category of granulomatous disorder, this extra nodal T cell lymphoma. But lately, this is considered, this is proven to be a neoplasm, and this is a separate category now. But still, I will discuss in a very uh, brief manner because just for the discussion. So, first thing is sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis, it is a systemic disorder. Now, most of these granulomatous disorder, they are systemic disorder. Not only the nose, you have to look for other organs of the body. Sarcoidosis most frequently involves the lungs. This thing you have to keep in mind. Lungs and intrathoracic nodes in 90% of patients, patients will have this, some pathology in their lungs. In fact, some of the studies even say that a patient I am, if you think sarcoidosis hai and lungs involved nahi hai, sarcoidosis is ruled out. It is that common. But as you can see from this table, so many organs can be involved, right? So in eye, what all can you see? You can see uveitis, get an ophthalmic opinion. In x-ray, you can see these bilateral hilar lymph nodes along with these infiltrates in these chest. Cardiac involvement can be seen obviously not very common, around 5%. Skin lesions, look for skin lesions in such patients, right? Look for meningeal enhancement. In this, meninges is enhanced, so nervous system can be involved. 
Now, classical appearance of nose, I'll be discussing later. This is skin involvement again. This is called lupus corneo. Purplish discoloration around the nose, on the face. It's called lupus corneo. Look for the eye examination. The crimal gland can be inflamed. So, basically, it is slightly more common in women. And what is the etiology? Sarcoidosis, basically, etiology exactly is unknown, but it is most likely an immunological response to an unidentified antigen. In a predisposed individual, now, now you are saying antigen exposure like mycobacteria, fungi, you are all exposed, hota hai. not everybody develops sarcoidosis, no, because these patients are generally genetically predisposed. Now, again, the classical, uh, the clinical features, Sub patients may have sari features, nahi hongi, but what all clinical features you have to look for? Suppose if the salivary gland is involved, the patient can have these, this kind of salivary gland enlargement. Now, this is a rare syndrome, Hereford syndrome. It is quite rare, but just for discussion, I want you to know. In this, the patient will have bilateral parotid gland enlargement, sarcoidosis, right? And I will be involved, uveitis will be involved, and the patient will have facial palsy. If, the, if you see such kind of patient, obviously, what will be the symptom? The patient will have cough, and dysphagia, right? So, what is the classical nose picture? Now, we are ENT surgeons. Let's focus on the nasal part of sarcoidosis. The patient, the typical appearance that we call the strawberry nasal mucosa. This is this looks like a strawberry. Strawberry nasal mucosa, why? Because of the granulomas against, pale granulomas against this erythematous mucosa, right? Or the patient can have septal perforation or this kind of classical submucous nodules. Again, lupus corneo or this kind of extensive crusting. If you see a patient with this kind of lot of crust, you can think of a granulomatous disorder. This is a patient who had sarcoidosis for around 20 years. Later on, what did she develop? She developed this kind of stenosis. Eventually, they can develop stenosis. They can develop destruction of the turbinates. They can develop uh, septal perforation. So these kind of pictures patient can present to you. So basically, there is a staging system. We, we don't have to go in that much of detail. Staging system is stage one, in which there is minimal involvement of the nose, which is still reversible, and stage three, in which it is extensive. How do you make a diagnosis? Earlier, this test, TVM test used to be done, but now this is barred because of safety reasons. What is the gold standard to diagnose it? The gold standard is the biopsy. Way to take a biopsy is an important thing. Only take, as any kid, you see a nose patient, you are an EMT surgeon, just take the biopsy from the nose. No, take a biopsy only from the involved lesion. If the lung is involved, do a bronchoscopy and get a biopsy. If the kidneys are involved, take a biopsy from the nose. If you see there are polyps and you see nasal strawberry mucosa, take a biopsy from. And classical, a granuloma will be seen, a non caseating granuloma. Obviously, you'll have to collaborate with your pathologist. You won't be able to diagnose based on the slides. And you can see the asteroid and Schumann bodies in sarcoidosis. What will you see in the x-rays? These punctate lytic lesions on the fingers and nasal bone will be lytic. Nasal bone can be eroded. These are classical CT scan appearance of a sarcoidosis patient. Can These are different kinds of variation. Not every patient will have the same. It can present with this. What do you see here? You see a nasal septum perforation and a soft tissue mass in the septum. What do you see here? The lacrimal gland is in involved. Enhancing lesion on MRI, lacrimal gland is involved, right? Again, here you see a simple mucosal thickening. So it can have different clinical pictures. The lungs, as I told you, 90% of cases, lungs will be involved. There are four stages starting from stage one. Just the lymph nodes are involved and stage four leading to fibrosis of both the lungs. So this is stage one to stage two, but the lungs have to be involved. Right. What, how do you treat? So some of around two thirds of patients will remit spontaneously. Obviously, if it is an early stage disease, only a localized disease is there. Two thirds of them will get spontaneously treated. But if it is not getting cured, what is the main drug? The drug is the steroid, prednisolone, right? Steroids are the main drug. But you can't keep the patient on steroids for long because all of you know the side effects of steroids. So what other drugs can we use? The immunomodulators. Immunomodulators like methotrexate, cyclophosphamide, hydroxychloroquine can be used in certain cases, especially in which joints are involved. Now, latest drug these days, we use these TNF-alpha inhibitors like infliximab, 
eaten or surfed. And what do you do about these nose lesions or the larynx lesions? You give intralesional steroid. What do you do about this nose though? So if you consult the patient to a neurologist, he's giving steroids and immunomodulators. What will the ENT surgeon do? The ENT surgeon will not go for surgery. Do not straight away go for surgery. I will do FES, no. How do you remove these crust? Give conservative treatment, right? Intranasal steroids, glucose, glycerine drops, nasal douching. And what is the role of surgery? Suppose you have to do surgery, surgery has to be done only in selective cases. First of all, patient has to be under remission. Like it's been a long time, patient is under remission, rheumatologist, immunologist says, yes, you can go ahead with surgery. So now you can do some cosmetic surgeries or only when the patient is having acute nasal obstruction or laryngeal obstruction, only then. Second, granulomatous disorder we are discussing, Wegener's granulomatosis. Now, this is the disorder that involves very commonly the nose and the sinonasal region. Sarcoidosis is in around 5 to 10 percent of cases nose is involved. But in Wegener's, it very commonly comes to ENT surgeons because nose is very commonly involved. Right? So, it is a granulomatosis. Sarcoidosis. But what is the difference between sarcoidosis and Wegener's? Is this term polyangitis, right? So, it is a granulomatous disorder, but you have to see a vasculitis in it to call it Wegener's. So, the classical triad in a typical patient of Wegener's, this triad will be there. Upper airway will be involved, kidneys will be involved, and lungs will be involved. Obviously, in some patients, typical cases won't be seen, but this is a classical, typical patient of Wegener's. And when, when you take a biopsy, small to medium-sized vessels will be there. So, vasculitis have to be there, kidneys will be involved, lungs and upper airway. So, again, what is the etiology? Why does a patient develop? It's an autoimmune disorder. Why? Because ANCA is there, right? So, and if you need to know a little bit about pathology, ANCA binds to these neutrophils and in turn it forms a granuloma. So, what will be the clinical features? The clinical features, general malaise, like sarcoidosis, disproportionate to the clinical findings, head and neck is involved, patient can have otitis media, why? Because the station tube will be obstructed, patient can have SNHL, patient can have facial palsy, and how will the nose be there? Either the patient can have this saddle nose deformity, why? Because they're all destructive disorders, they can destroy the nasal bone, patient can have saddle nose, patient can present you with this extensive crust, and again here, extensive destruction. So, septum can be destroyed, turbinates are destroyed, nasal collapse. Patient can present like this. Extensive crusting, erythematous mucosa, raw mucosa, purulent discharge little bit, and like you can see ulcers on the septum. So, varied kind of presentation. You have to keep this diagnosis in mind once in these patients. How will the larynx present? This can also be there. What do you see here? You will see a submucus. You see a uh, subglottic stenosis. This kind of patient, you all know how will this patient present. Look for systemic signs. Look for other organs if you see such patient. Do not just go, ki ye hai, send to, no. See other signs, see other organs like lacrimal like gland, you see the conjunctiva, and this, what is this in the gums? This is a classical strawberry gingival hyperplasia, right? In nose, we said strawberry nose, strawberry nasal mucosa. Here we see a classical strawberry gums okay what will you see in the lungs in sarcoidosis you remember bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy was very common in beginners we see these kind of cavitating lesion you see these cavitating lesions in the lungs right cavitating lesions in the lungs in the ct scan so get a chest x-ray done get a ct scan done kidneys will be involved very commonly so get urine analysis done Patient can have skin and joints involvement and rule out these, look for these ulcers, look for meningeal involvement. How do you diagnose? How do you diagnose Wegener's? The blood test that is made is C anchor, right? Get a C anchor done. Uh, get a C anchor done. What is the sensitivity? In fact, 91 to 99%. 91 to 99% sensitivity, but of course, if the disease is very limited. Sometimes we get ANCA negative in such cases. But then you have to see, look for other diagnostic possibilities like get a biopsy, get a urine analysis, get a chest x-ray done. 
you take a biopsy and you consult your pathologist, what will you see? You see a non-caseating granuloma, plus you will see vasculitis. So vasculitis, non-caseating granuloma, from, again, where to take the biopsy? Suppose you see a patient who is having this nasal, uh, nasal mass, paranasal, you get a CT done, CT has showing a, uh, opacification. So best to take biopsy is take from the paranasal sinuses, not the nasal polyp. Sometimes nasal polyp come out to be non-specific. So it is best to take biopsy from the paranasal sinuses rather than from the nose. So what are radiological investigations do? Again, you will see opacification, but a classical Wegener's patient will see new bone formation. You can see here, all of you can see here, this is a new bone formation. The maxillary sinus is opacified plus new bone formation is there. Here, what do you see? This is a classical Wegener's presentation you can have in your exam. This is sclerosis of the sinus walls. So new bone formation, sclerosis of the sinus walls, some mucosal hypertrophy, right? So this is a classical Wegener's. You might not see in every patient, but this is a classical presentation. What do you see here? This is a Wegener's patient. Where is the septum? There is no septum. Where are the turbinates? Destroyed, right? Where is the floor of the nasal bone? Destroyed, but there is some uh, mucosal hypertrophy. Again, no septum, turbinates destroyed, right? So, in fact, the American College of Rheumatology criteria for classification of Wegener's, unless you have two or more of these criteria, you cannot diagnose the patient as Wegener's. What are these criteria? Nasal inflammation, like I explained to you, and normal chest X-ray with these nodules. Urinary sediment has to be there. You have to see microscopic hematuria because kidneys are very commonly involved. And again, on biopsy, you can see a granuloma. How do you treat? Again, similar to sarcoidosis, main drug is the steroid, right? Steroid. So, prednisolone is given in around 1 milligram per kg body weight, and uh, this can be tapered later on. But you don't want the patient to be steroid dependent, so give immunosuppressive drugs like cyclophosphamide, methotrexate. There is this new drug, rituximab, anti CD20 antibody. But again, you mainly use these drugs, prednisolone, cyclophosphate, methotrexate. You use these kind of TNN alpha inhibitors and rituximab only in refractory cases. That is, those who are not responding to them. Why? Because they, they have their own side effects. So, what does the ANT surgeon do? Every All the treatment is not to be done by the immunologist. What will you do? You have to do your part. Treat the nose. How do you treat the nose? The patient is having extensive crusting. Uh, what do you do? Douching, like I explained, douching, lubricants. Will you do FES in these surgeries? No. Wait for the patient to be in remission. Will you do endoscopic DCR? No. Unless the patient is having a lot of epiphora and it's acute obstruction, you can try to open it, but wait. Let the patient to be in remission. Then later on, you can do these cosmetic surgeries. If the patient is having saddle nose, do augmentation rhinoplasty, but later on. What do you do about the SNHL? Give a hearing aid. So third disorder is the shirk strauss disorder. It is the rarest of them. It is more rare than sarcoidosis and Wegener's. It is also known as the new term now is eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. We don't call it shirk strauss now. Why? Because what is the difference between sarcoidosis and Wegener's? Wegener's also had this term, remember? Granulomatous with polyangitis. But what is the new thing that is added here is the eosinophilic, right? So how do you differentiate it from Wegener's is the term eosinophilia. There has to be an eosinophilia. So Chapel Hill consensus defined it as, as eosinophilic rich and granulomatous inflammation involving the respiratory tract plus this vasculitis has to be there. Again, the etiology is unknown, most likely an autoimmune disorder to it and an allergic response. Clinical features, again, it's a systemic disorder. Look for all other organs. What all will you see? Slightly different than Wegener's. 99% of patients will have asthma, right? Why? Because I told you eosinophilia. What thing comes to your mind when you see asthmatis, allergic rhinitis patient is allergic. The term here to remember is allergic. So 99% of them will be asthma. 93% of them will have sinonasal symptoms like nasal polyps, nasal obstruction. 75% will have allergic rhinitis and nasal polyps. Again, the symptoms, you all know what all symptoms you have to see for nose, for neurological. Central nervous system is the second commonest cause of death in these patients. What is the most common cause of death in 
Chuck Strauss is the cardiac. Because cardiac gets in, eventually it's getting involved with granular matter implantation if you do not treat them well. Look for other signs and symptoms I've already explained. There are three clinical phases. We don't have to go in detail of that. First, second phase, third phase, which eventually becomes systemic vasculitis with other symptoms. How do you make a diagnosis? Biopsy, of course, you know the gold standard is take a biopsy. But the thing here to remember is the eosinophilia. Peripheral eosinophilia will be more than 10%. This thing, you see a patient, you see this kind of blood picture, it should ring a bell. So, blood test in Wegener's, the blood test that I told you is C anchor. What is the blood test that is specific for Chuck Strauss? It's P anchor. In majority of cases, P anchor specific for myeloperoxidase will be positive. Right? This is the thing to remember here. What will the test x rays show? It will show all these kind of features like infiltrates, effusions, right? Get a biopsy done. You will see a necrotizing vasculitis along with granulomas, and you will see eosinophilia, right? So, vasculitis, granulomatis may be tha, pregnancy may be tha, granulomas be tha, but the, and yaha pe different kya mile, eosinophilia. American College of Rheumatology ne iske bhi criteria banaye hai, like Wegener's. Isme four or more of them have to be present if you want to call it Schultz loss. Char in me se present hone chahiye. First is asthma ho sakta hai. Eosinophilia, I told you, more than 10%. Nerves involvement, like mononeuropathy, polyneuropathy. Lung infiltrate, which are migratory or transitory. Nose, I told you, it's very commonly involved. So, paranasal sinus is involved. And how do you treat? Again, the drug of choice, the medical drug, steroids, right? Main drugs are these steroids, but then other immunomodulators also have a role. Do you do FES? Again, in selected cases, only if there's acute nasal obstruction. First of all, you try to give topical nasal steroids. If not working, you can do FES. So fourth, this disorder, not very, we don't see very common. It is very common in drug users, very similar to granulomatous disorder. It's called cocaine induced midline destructive lesion. What is the thing to uh, see here is the cocaine. So, cocaine is a cause, causing it basically. Clinical pictures similar to other granulomatous disorder, I'm not discussing again, but the thing to remember here is it's not systemic involvement. Nahi hai. Patient is using cocaine in the nose, only the nose is involved. Other organs will not be involved. So, diagnosis is a little easier. Right? You will see these kind of clinical pictures. The palate perforation hoga jo ki Wegener's or usme itna commonly nahi hai. Nose is perforated, septum is perforated. What, what do you see here? Very classical picture of CT scan of a cocaine induced granulomatous disorder. Where are the septum? Where are the turbinates? Nothing. Everything is eroded. Right? How do you diagnose? You can take a biopsy, but the biopsy is little confusing because it is very similar to Wegener's granulomatosis. So, how will you make a diagnosis? The investigation to remember here is HNE anchor is positive in 90% of cases, right? HNE anchor. All right. 50% of patients can also have PR3 anchor. Histology is similar. So, how do you make a different diagnosis? Get the patient tested for okay. What do you do? Is my steroids they get immunosuppressive they get? No. Just ask the patient to stop using okay and conservative treatment like douching them. Fourth is, again, not very common, but still I will discuss it, is eosinophilic granuloma. It is now regarded as a neoplastic condition, and it is also a manifestation of Langerhans and histiocytosis. It is very commonly seen in the bones, especially in the skull bones. What do you see here? Radiolucent lytic lesion, hey, eosinophilic granuloma. Skull is very commonly involved. Diagnosis, you see a CT scan done, you take a biopsy and you will get to it. How do you treat? If it is solitary, yani type 2, just cure target or excise it. If it is generalized, I mean, the hepatosplenomegaly is there, lymph nodes are involved, give etoposide and steroid. Generalized one has a little hematomasis. And next one is giant cell granuloma. Giant cell granuloma is a benign condition. It is also known as giant cell reparative granuloma. How does the patient present? What do you see here? What do you see here in the, uh, this is CT scan of ma mandible maxilla. What do you see here? 
is basically a radio nuisant area. So lytic areas in the bone, this is a patient of cherubism in which bilateral involvement of jaws is there by the giant cell granuma. So it is a lytic lesion basically. So how would you make a diagnosis? You can take a biopsy from these lesions, get a CT scan, and the classical soap bubble appearance, right? You see a classical soap bubble appearance of the jaws. Now, next one is the cholesterol granuloma. You all must be thinking, ye to kaan mein hota, ye to mastoid mein hota. Right, you're right. It is very commonly in the mastoid, but again, you have to keep this in mind. This is also rare in the paranasal sinuses, but it can be seen. This thing is the cholesterol granuloma. What just the ear may want that you want that basically a foreign body reaction to cholesterol crystals. Clinical features just very common in the ear. Cosmetic deformities patient can present. How do you make a diagnosis? Take a biopsy, get a CT scan done, and how do you treat? Just like in the ear, get the surgical drainage and marsupialize that area. Drain that area and marsupialize. Now, this is a thing of debate. This is debatable because of the categorization. This is basically a neoplasm. It's a very rare kind of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, right? Extra nodal NK cell or a T cell. This is a rare non-Hodgkin lymphoma of the mid phase. So nasal type, nasal type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. It, what is the etiology of this non-Hodgkin lymphoma? The thing to remember is the Epstein-Barr virus, right? So Epstein-Barr virus has a very important etiological role in this. It can destroy the nose, the palate. It's a very aggressive, very destructive lesion. So it is highly fatal also, very aggressive, and the patient is having poor prognosis if you do not treat early. Take a biopsy, and you can do this immunohistochemistry. The, the lesion will be positive for CD56, CD2, and cytoplasmic CD3. This is how you will differentiate it from Wegener's and sarcoidosis. And of course, imaging and bone marrow biopsy, just to stage what kind of, what is the stage of non Hodgkin lymphoma? How do you treat? This is very aggressive, but it responds dramatically to radiotherapy. Rhinoscleroma. Now, these were all inflammatory conditions of granulomatous. Now we discuss the infective conditions. What all infections can lead to a granulomatous disorder of the nose, right? This is a rhinoscleroma. It is also granulomatous disorder and it is endemic in a lot of countries. Even in India, it is endemic in Rajasthan, Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh. Most of the uh, studies say because of unhygienic conditions, low living conditions, only these kind of patients form rhinoscleroma. The, what is the bacteria here responsible? It's a diplococcus klebsiella rhinoscleroma. And how does it spread? By it's also known as the born fish bacilli. Clinical features vary presentation. Patient can present with this classical Hebra nose. If we used to call it Hebra nose, with this kind of enormous swelling inside the nose. Patient can present with this patches, ulcers inside the oral cavity, and other late stages, so scarring, hai, saddle nose, hai, essay present for sector. Because we have granulomatous disorders, hai, destructive. Hai, Symptom teen stages hoti hai, catarrhal, granulomatous, sclerotic. These are symptoms similar to granul granulomatous disorders. Ke How do you make a diagnosis? Take a biopsy, you will see a granuloma with this classical Russell body and a Nicholas cell. The classical, you have to collaborate with your pathologist. You will see these foamy cells, foamy histiocytes, right? How do you treat it? How do you treat? Streptomycin was given earlier, but these days streptomycin is not given. Tetracycline septomycin used to be given earlier. Now the drug of choice is ciprofloxacin, right? Ciprofloxacin along with topical and systemic rifampicin with topical acriflavin is given now for rhinoscleroma. Radiotherapy in selected cases can be used, but we generally avoid using it. And surgery only if the patient is having acute nasal obstruction only then. Now, next is the rhinosporidiosis. 90% of cases all over the world come from India and Sri Lanka. How does it spread from water, soil? So most commonly these paddy cultivators catch it. Rhinosporidiosis, you must be thinking it's a fungi. No, it is not a fungi. Rhinosporidium seberi is not a fungi. Now it is proven that it is a group of fish parasites referred to the drip clade. 
How do you diagnose? Take a biopsy, you will see this kind of sporangia, right? You can see this kind of sporangia in a biopsy. How does it present? This is the oropharyngeal part of the rhinosporidiosis, the biopsy part. It can present like this bluish red mass inside the nose. It can present from the lacrimal gland, the eye. How do you treat? Just excise it. Now here we are, uh, we know that surgery plays a major role. Yes, you have to give Dapsone also, but excise is, excision is important. So one thing you have to remember is not only excise, but excise with cautery of the base of the lesion. Why? So that there is no recurrence. TB, we all must have seen a lot of TB cases. How do you see ENT surgeons for TB cases? They are most commonly cervical lymph nodes, but sinonasal TB, you have to keep in mind. In fact, last year only, I myself saw three cases of sinonasal tuberculosis. It's still under publication, that article and writing. So it is all the rare, uh, but you have to keep this diagnosis in mind. Most of the cases are secondary to pulmonary TB. These kind of patients first, they develop chest TB, then they get sinonasal TB. How do you treat? You all know the standard treatment of TB, six to nine months of ATT. How do you diagnose? This classical epithelioid cells will be seen. This Langerhan giant cell classical of TB with caseous necrosis, very, simple, very easy to diagnose for a pathologist. You see these AFB bacilli or this. Next is syphilis, not very commonly seen. It can be primary, secondary, and tertiary. You all know in primary, you develop the chancre on the exposed. Wherever the, there was the area of the contact, patient can develop chancre. In secondary, the patient can have mucosal patches. Patient can have these rashes on the body. Congenital syphilis is the poor baby caught from the mother during the birth. Either just during infancy, the patient can have all these symptoms or later on, patient can develop with this Hutchinson teeth, mulberry molars and palatal perforations. Now, nose is most commonly seen in tertiary syphilis cases, right? How does the patient present either with a gamma or this, you see, it's a very destructive disorder. In fact, in some of the studies, it is seen that within a matter of seven days, all of the septum was destroyed. So you have to treat these patients early. How do you diagnose? Investigation, you know that, how do you diagnose this triponema pallidum, dark ground illumination, plus you do serological test for syphilis. And you, of course, you have to take a biopsy. How do you treat? So drug of choice is benzathine penicillin G, is the drug of choice. If the patient is resistant to these drugs or allergic, we can use other drugs. You have to re remove this kind of necrotic debris, so sequestromy, cosmetic surgery later on. Leprosy, again, you don't see very commonly. You know it is of three types, tuberculous, lepromatous, borderline. Any of these stages, patient can present with this classical saddle nose, deformity of the nose, the lesions of the skin, and in x-ray, you will see the nasal bonus eroded. How do you treat? Is the standard WHO treatment for leprosy? Is Dapsone, Rifazamine, and Rifamis. Now, this granulomatous disorder, it is not very uncommon. We see a lot of, this is also granulomatous disorder, but not very uncommon these days. Not very uncommon these days. Why? Because a lot of patients are now having uncontrolled diabetes. A lot of patients are undergoing chemotherapy for cancers, organ transplantation, HIV positive patients. So fungal diseases are very commonly in immunosuppressed patients. And it looks very similar to a nasal polyp. It also looks very similar to a other granulomatous condition. So this diagnosis has to be kept in mind, right? What do you see of the CT scan here? Uh, looks like a fungal, looks like a granulomatous disorder or a nasal polyp. So it is very important to differentiate it from the other disorders. Now, fungal sinusitis basically can be two types. It can be invasive or it can be non-invasive. How do you know, if, how do you say it is invasive or non-invasive, not based on clinical picture? Of course, clinical picture will be different in both of them, but pathologist will help you make this diagnosis based on the biopsy and based on the radiological findings, you can say it is invasive. In the biopsy, if there are hyphae present in the submucosa, the blood vessels, you say it is an invasive fungal sinusitis. If they are not present, if you just see fungal hyphae inside the nose and paranasal sinuses, 
particles not invading the submucosa, we called it as non-invasive. Now, non-invasive is of three types, allergic fungal sinusitis, can be fungal ball, or it can be saprophytic. We are not discussing the non-invasive fungal sinusitis here because we are discussing the granulomatous disorder, right? Now, invasive can be of three types, acute invasive, which are less than four weeks, and the chronic invasive will be more than four weeks, and third category is the granulomatous fungal invasion. This is the category that I will stress upon. This is a fungal sinusitis, but there will be formation of granules. Most commonly, aspergillosis and mucor are very common, but of course, there are other kinds of fungi that can be seen in these patients. Now, this is a non-invasive fungal sinusitis clinical picture. Patient is having nasal polyp, urinal discharge, right? And what do you see in the CT scan here? You see this calcification, you see this mottling appearance. Why? Because of the yeah, inspissated mucus. This is a classical CT scan of a fungal sinusitis. If you see this kind of CT, in normal sinusitis, my apoe calcification is generally negative. If you see this, you can think about fungal because of the, these are because of the inspissated mucus. This is a picture of fungal ball. A fungal ball is nothing inside a sinus. There is collection of hyphae. There is no invasion of submucosa. There is no invasion of blood vessels. This is the CT scan again of a fungal ball. One sinus is just involved, right? You see a pacification, just one sinus is involved. There is this calcification. So this is a non-invasive fungal sinusitis. These are pictures of an invasive fungal sinusitis. The term itself is very, it can, it is showing you that invasive hair, aggressive hair, patient can have this endophthalmitis, panophthalmitis, because from the sinuses, it is eroded inside the lamina, it is gone inside the orbit, right? How, what is the thing here you see? The palate is eroded with these black crust. This is a classical picture of a mucor mycosis. You can see black crust, palate will be eroded, classical picture of a mucor patient. Again, classical picture of a mucor patient, extensive erosion. What do you see? Where is the palate? Palate is eroded. There is a mass, cyanonasal mass, and palate is eroded. So this is an invasive fungal sinusite. There are many pathogenic, around 400,000 species of fungal organisms. Only 400 of them are human pathogens, so many fungi, but similar picture can be seen. Invasive hoga, non-invasive hoga, similar picture ho sakti, koi bhi fungus ho. Aspergillus fumigators, flavors, niger, alternaria. Again, we see the mucor. There are many fungi responsible. This, your microbiologist will help you diagnose which fungi is involved. Signs and symptoms very similar to other granulomatous disorder, fever, other acute invasive hai, fever hai, nasal obstruction, epistaxis, discharge, anosmia ho sakta hai, proptosis ho sakta hai, agar eye bhi involved ho gai hai, visual disturbance. How will you investigate? Take a biopsy from where? Not from the nose. Don't take a polyp ki biopsy, generally non-specific hai. Take a biopsy from the paranasal sinuses, right? Take a biopsy in histopathology, you can see a granuloma. Agar chronic granulomatous hai to, nahi to, invasive hoga to granuloma nahi. Then get a CT scan done. I show you the CT scans of, you can get an MRI done. When you do get an MRI done, when you are thinking that it has invaded the brain, it has gone intracranially, it has gone intraorbitally, it has gone in, inside the orbit, get an MRI also done because obviously MRI gives you a better picture for soft tissues. How do you diagnose it fungal? Now, these things you have to remember before sending the biopsy, please call your microbiologist that special stains are required. Otherwise, fungi kabhi bhi diagnose nahi ho pata. Mostly miss ho jayega. Aapko polyp mila, aap soch ho ki fungus hai. Call your microbiologist ke ye special stains lagane hai. Kaun se special stains hai? Periodic acid shift. Brocot stain, gumori, methamine, silver, nitrate stain. Only then, aapko pata lagega ki fungal hai. Otherwise, fungi nahi. How do you send the sample? You send the sample in normal saline, not in formula. Now, these different stains humko aise help karte hai, basically. Kaun sa fungus involved? Obviously, you won't be able to diagnose. Your microbiologist can help you diagnose. This is a classical aspergillosis. What do you see? 
ब्रांचिंग है हाइफिक बेसिकली ब्रांचिंग है सेप्टेट है यू सी सेप्टा ये क्लासिकल एस्पोजिलोसिस का होता है अक्यूट एंगल पे ब्रांच कर रहे हैं मल्टीपल ब्रांचिंग है अक्यूट एंगल ब्रांचिंग है क्लासिकल एस्पोजिलोसिस है ये अगेन एक फंगा है विच इज दी हिस्टो प्लाज्मा ईस्ट लाइक है बडिंग है हिस्टो प्लाज्मा विच स्टेन इज दिस गोमोरी मेथमीन स्टेन वॉट इज दिस वेरी कॉमन म्यूकोर माइकोसिस लाइक आई शोड यू म्यूकोरमाइकोसिस में इससे डिफरेंस कैसे है एस्पोजिलोसिस से नाइनटी डिग्री ब्रांचिंग नॉन सेप्टे 90 डिग्री ब्रांचिंग मल्टीपल ब्रांचिंग नहीं है ओनली सिंगल ब्रांचिंग सो मोस्टली अनवेजिव में आपको डायग्नोस डिफ्रेंशिएट करना पड़ता है म्यूकर है या स्पोजिलोसिस है दिस इज हाउ यू कैन हेल्प योर माइक्रोबायोलॉजिस्ट टू डायग्नोस अगेन गोमोरी मेथमीन स्टेन यू कैन सी दिस इज ब्लास्टोमाइकोस ईस्ट लाइक स्मॉल स्मॉल ईस्ट लाइक दिस इज अ ब्लास्टोमाइसिस स्टेशन दिस इज इम्यूनोफ्लोरसेंट स्टेन एंड दिस इज दी पी एस स्टेन क्रिप्टोकॉकस Again, east like small, small, small. This is a PAS stain. So the point I want to stress is basically special stains are required. Normal HNE stains in each other. How do you treat this fungal sinusitis? Now here the comes the role of surgery. यहाँ पे बिना surgery के नहीं चलेगा. Allergic fungal sinusitis, invasive fungal sinusitis. Do early surgery. Immediately, as soon as possible, the patient is stable. Take the patient for surgery. Why? Because if the fungus is remaining there and no antifungal will act, remove that debris. Take the patient for surgical deprivement urgently, immediately. Plus, as soon as you diagnose, yes, you can see a fungi, you will see a hyphae. Start the patient on amphotericin B. This is the medical drug for all fungal sinusitis. Of course, it has its own toxicity. It is renal toxic, kidney toxic hai, but this is the life-saving drug. Agar invasive sinusitis hai to. Start amphotericin B at the dose of one milligram per kg per day, and a total dose of three grams can be given. Obviously, you have to monitor the kidney function test in between. There are other drugs like triconazole, boriconazole, posaconazole, and there is some role of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, but it is still not proven. So, but the main drug is amphotericin B. If the patient tolerates it, right, you can give boriconazole, posaconazole. so the main is the and plus treat the diabetes most of these patients are immunosuppressed like i told you sare diabetics most these diabetics hong invasive sinusitis ke immunosuppressed honge hepatitis hoga so manage that also right insulin start karna hai get a physician refer done so mainly fungal sinusitis sinusitis ye teen cheeze urgently honi chahiye all right so this was my lecture So if there are any uh... thanks very much dr seema students please type your questions in chat box uh, thank you seema uh, excellent presentation you covered uh, so many things and uh, very comprehensive and i think the students will find it really helpful because uh, they are asked the microbiology they are asked the uh, presentation and uh, they make the diagnosis on the basis of images at times so uh, a very nice presentation thank you ma'am uh -huh. first question akshay has asked can you explain the symptoms again what कौन से सिम्टम्स भी बच्चे ने पूछा है सिम्टम्स बेटा कौन सी डिजीज का आप सिम्टम्स पूछ रहे हैं वैसे सिम्टम्स इन जनरल अगर आप पूछ रहे हैं ग्रैनोलोमेटस डिसऑर्डर्स के सिम्टम्स इन जनरल सिम्टम्स बिकॉज इरोडिंग डिसऑर्डर बेसिकली राइट सो इरोडिंग डिसऑर्डर है तो एक तो जनरल सिम्टम्स होते हैं साइनोनेजल कोई भी इन्वॉल्व होगा कोई भी मास होगा जनरल सिम्टम्स होंगे जैसे कि नेजल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन होगा नेजल डिस्चार्ज होगा बट एपिस्टैक्सिस भी होगा नॉर्मल साइनसाइटिस में आपको इतना एपिस्टैक्सिस नहीं मिलेगा दूसरी चीज क्या होगी पेन होगा नोज में फेशियल पेन 
नोज में पेन बेसिकली ये सारी चीजें होंगी तो आप इट शुड रिंग अ बेल इट शुड रिंग अ बेल दैट इट इज नॉट अ क्लासिकल साइनोसाइटिस पेशेंट फीवर हो सकता है अगर अगर अक्यूट इन्वेजिव फंगल साइनोसाइटिस है और और सिम्टम्स क्या होंगे बाकी तो जनरल सिम्टम्स होंगे अगर प्रोप्टोसिस होगा अगर आई भी इन्वॉल्व हो गई है आपको पैलेट एग्जामिनेशन करोगे ऑपरेशन होगा पेशेंट कैन हैव नेजर रिजर्जिटेशन राइट जॉइंट्स बाकी सब तो सिस्टमिक सिम्टम्स हैं वो मैं आपको बता चुकी राइट सो राइनोस्पोरिडियोसिस में बेसिकली बहुत ज्यादा डिटेल में तो बेसिकली वो पैथोलॉजिस्ट आप, आपको उससे कोऑर्डिनेट करना पड़ता है बट क्लासिकल एक पिक्चर आपको मिलेगी ये ग्रेनोलोमा की और स्पोरेंजी लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ स्पोरेंजी आई डोंट थिंक यू नीड टू गो इन टू दैट डिटेल की ये जो लाइफ साइकिल होती है इसकी स्पोरेंजिया की बट बेसिकली आपको पैथोलॉजी में ये ग्रेनोलोमा डिसाइड दीज ये स्पोरेंजिया मिलेगी इसकी एक अपनी लाइफ साइकिल होती है दैट आर नॉट कवर इन कवर्ड इन दिस लेक्चर सो और मल्टीपल ऑर्गन इन्वॉल्व हो सकते हैं वो मैंने आपको बताया था मल्टीपल ऑर्गन ओरोफेरेंजियल पार्ट इन्वॉल्व हो सकता है नोज इन्वॉल्व हो सकता है लेक्राइमल ग्लैंड इन्वॉल्व हो सकते हैं सो राइनोस्पोरेडियोसिस कैन इन्वॉल्व ऑल दीज ऑर्गन एनी अदर क्वेश्चन इज दिपेम्पिसन इन प्रोफल एक्सेस ऑफ इन प्रोफल एक्सेस ऑफ Profile excess of uh, rhinosporidiosis, I think he means to say. Rifampicin का तो ऐसा कोई role नहीं है। तो dapsone दिया जाता है इसमें और excise किया जाता है। Rifampicin का role नहीं है। Treatment of systemic rhinosporidiosis. Dapsone is the drug of choice, बेटा। Dapsone drug of choice. Of course, if it is resistant to dapsone, then you can get a culture sensitivity done. किस पे सेंसिटिव है देन यू कैन गिव एंड एक्सरसाइज तो करना है एंड समटाइम्स देयर इज रेक्रेंस यू मे हैव टू डू मल्टीपल सर्जरीज इन दीस पेशेंट्स दे मे कम विद अ रेक्रेंस देन यू हैव टू टेक अप द पेशेंट फॉर सर्जरी अगेन एंड देन एट द सेम टाइम आफ्टर द सर्जरी पुट देम ऑन द मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट सो दैट द रेक्रेंस इज प्रिवेंटेड और डिलेड एट टाइम्स एंड कल्चर सेंसिटिविटी करके वी कैन आल्सो सी That what is patient responding to, right? As a rifampicin, I don't think we can start. Prognosis of rhinosporidia is a good prognosis. Generally, as a baki granulomatous disorders ki tarah poor prognosis nahi hai. Like maine aapko dikhaya Wegener's TB ka bhi good prognosis. In fact, rhinosporidia has a good prognosis. Agar aap you treat these patients early, patient will have good prognosis. You take a biopsy. Agar aap face hi karte jaoge, you think that nasal polyp hai, do face, to prognosis poor hai. Start the patient on early treatment, then the patient. Will. Yes, malignant rhinosporidiosis very rare. बहुत rare होता है. Long-standing rhinosporidiosis. Yes, case reports have been given that malignancy be developed. Sir, then you treat as a normal sinonasal malignancy. की तरह ही treat करना है. तब ये excision और dapsone से नहीं चलेगा. Rare है, but yes, it is true. हो सकता है malignant. Yes, yeah, so basically, it does not have that uh, disruptive. Yes. Uh, thing in uh, in in it. So if you can excise it, excise it from the base, cauterize the base, so yes. the chances of uh, healing are quite good. Right. Yeah. So I think everybody has got the idea that we why we have chapter discussed here that her rhinosinusitis ki tarah treat nahi karna nasal polyp dekha hai to get a biopsy, get an immunologist opinion basically. ये सारी चीजें इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू सी योर पेशेंट नेक्स्ट टाइम विद दिस थिंग इन माइंड इट विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल एंड सिंस द स्टूडेंट्स आर स्प्रेड आउट ऑल ओवर इंडिया I think uh, in certain areas they see more of this rhinosporidiosis and rhinosleroma cases. Yes. And then it is hair, right? You're right. Yeah. So uh, allergic fungal definitely there, but also. Chronic granulomatous fungus. We have to keep in mind when we are seeing these okay. patients. Right, allergic fungus. So, quite commonly, it comes. I mean, especially in our center, there is allergic fungal 
और उसका रिस्पॉन्स भी अच्छा है सर्जरी से सर्जरी करके वेरी क्लोजली वी डू डायग्नोस्टिक नेजल एंडोस्कोपी वी गिव स्टीरोड टैबलेट एज वेल एज प्रेज इसका रिस्पॉन्स बहुत अच्छा है ब्रांचिंग and clinical picture bahut similar thi muper se so that's what one year hai abhi still alive and this is a rapid kind of a diagnosis uh, because fungal culture takes a lot of time and sometimes it may not be cultured uh, cultured as well so kwh and uh, this can give you a good uh, along with the clinical presentation right 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 so there is another question about uh, Amphotericin. Okay. How it is given? What is the dose and duration? In what dilution? Right. So, amphotericin. So, amphotericin basically three grams maximum dosage. Although, हमने बहुत सारे patients जिनमें intracranial जा चुका था five to seven grams भी amphotericin दिया है. But with very close monitoring of the uh, kidney function tests, the LFTs. Exactly liposomal, I don't remember, but amphotericin maximum dosage five to seven grams. That I'm de chuke. Is ko DNS and along with insulin, hume diya jata hai. And posaconazole, I'm not very sure exactly. Dete only after we have given the amphotericin ki maximum dose we have given, then we start the patient on posaconazole. Now exactly how much is the maximum? Uh, Dilution and dosage of posaconazole. I don't know. I can get back to you if you message me uh, later on. But exactly how much is the maximum dosage? I don't. Know. Yeah, basically we have to monitor for the potassium levels and uh, how much the patient is tolerating. If the potassium levels are uh, within range, then you can give the amphotericin uh, till five milligrams uh, uh, total. And liposomal amphotericin is much safer, uh, much, much better tolerated as well. Right. Posaconazole is mostly posaconazole and voriconazole is given uh, in the oral right. uh, form. Amphotericin so giving us a then you can shift them to voriconazole and uh, posaconazole. Of course, both posaconazole is quite expensive, but it responds very well. Patient got a good response. Did they invasive sinusitis? इन्होंने बोला है काइंडली एक्सप्लेन वेगनस इट्रोकोनाजोल इन वेजव में जनरली नहीं देते म्यूकर पे इट्रोकोनाजोल डजंट वर्क इट डजंट वर्क वेरी वेल ऑन एस्पर्जिलोसिस इट्रोकोनाजोल इज नॉट गिवन इट इज डन इन वेजव में नो रोल इन वेजव में एम्फोटेरिसिन बी वोरिकोनाजोल प्लीज स्टिक टू दोस ड्रग्स लॉट ऑफ फिजिशियंस आई हैव सीन के सस्पेक्टेड फंगल साइनोसाइटिस इट्रोकोनाजोल चलाए जा रहे हैं डोंट गिव दैट डजंट वर्क सो काइंडली एक्सप्लेन वेगनस Okay, maybe he joined late. <laughs> so just briefly, you can recapitulate. So Wegner's glomerulosis with polyangiitis differentiate. How do we do sarcoidosis? Because of this term. पॉलीएंजाइटिस जनरल मैटर्स डिसऑर्डर है स्मॉल टू मीडियम वेसल्स भी इन्वॉल्व होंगे तभी हम वेगनस बोलते हैं जो छह क्राइटेरिया मैंने आपको बताए थे उसमें से होने चाहिए क्राइटेरिया सो दिस ट्रायड थी ये तीन ये ट्रायड बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है अपर एयर भी इन्वॉल्व होगा किडनीज इन्वॉल्व होगी लंग्स इन्वॉल्व होगा प्लस ब्लड वेसल्स में आपको वैस्कुलाइटिस मिलेगा बायोप्सी में सो दिस इज अ वेगनस पेशेंट The blood test that is important here is so head and neck. सबसे ज़्यादा commonly इसमें involved होता है. ज़्यादातर ENT के पास जो inflammatory granulomatous आते हैं वो होते हैं Wegener's के because head and neck 90% of cases में involved होगा. Besides other symptoms, patient कैसे present कर सकता है? Sudden loss, rusting, destruction of the septum and the inferior turbinates. ऐसे present कर सकता है. Extensive rust है, raw area है. 
अल्सर्स हैं सो नेजल डिस्चार्ज फेशियल पेन प्रेजेंट करेगा लैरिंग्स कैसे प्रेजेंट करेगा अगर लैरिंग्स में वेगनर्स है तो स्टिनोसिस हो सकता है लैरिंजर्स ये वाला पेशेंट कैसे प्रेजेंट करेगा ये हम सबको पता है स्ट्राइडर होगा डिस्निया होगा अदर ऑर्गन्स देखने पड़ेंगे जैसे कि क्लासिकल जिंजिबल स्ट्रॉबेरी हाइपोक्लेजिया मिलेगा गम्स में आईज में आपको मिलेगा लेक्राइबल ग्लास डिक्राइसिस हो सकता है लंग्स में क्लासिकली बिकॉज ये ट्राइड में लंग्स बहुत जरूरी है इन्वॉल्व होना तो कैविटेटिंग लीजन मिलेंगे किडनीज विल बी इन्वॉल्व इन अराउंड किडनीज विल बी इन्वॉल्व सी फॉर दी स्किन एंड दी जॉइंट यू विल सी दीज अल्सर्स एंड जॉइंट इन्वॉल्वमेंट वॉट इज दी ब्लड टेस्ट दैट इज डायग्नोस्टिक हेयर इज दी सी एंकर द सी एंकर is specific in 99% so patient suspect kar rahe hain vigness ka get a c anka done c anka kuch localized diseases mein like diseases mein uh, like 20% cases mein ye negative bhi ho sakta hai agar bahut hi localized hai to to fir baki blood test karenge like urine chest x ray take a biopsy you will see a non cagiating necrosis granuloma with पॉलीजाइटिस इसको आपको याद रखना है जानुलमा तो मिल ही रहा है पॉलीएंजाइटिस में मिलेगा राइट सो पॉलीएंजाइटिस एंड निक्रोसिस एंड ग्रैनुलोमैटिस इनपुट सीटी स्कैन में क्या मिलेगा क्लासिकल वेगनर्स का सीटी स्कैन में आपको न्यू बोन फॉर्मेशन मिलेगी आपने देखा होगा इन्वर्टेड पैपिलोमा में भी न्यू बोन फॉर्मेशन होती है ऐसे ही वेगनर्स में भी न्यू बोन फॉर्मेशन होगी Besides this sinus opacification, the sinus opacified hai with this new bone formation. Maxillary sinus में आपको क्या मिल रहा है? Sclerosis of the maxillary sinus, new bone formation, and ये hypertrophy भी है, mucosal hypertrophy. ये picture भी दिख सकती है आपको CT scan में. Septum नहीं है, septum eroded, turbinate eroded, infraorbital floor eroded, septum is eroded here, again eroded here. सो इरोजन है बेसिकली बोन इरोजन मिल सकती है आपको सीटी स्कैन में वेगनस की सो प्रोसेस भी है साइड बॉल्स की बोन इरोजन सो न्यू बोन फॉर्मेशन भी है बोन इरोजन भी है स्क्लेरोसिस भी है हाउ डू यू डायग्नोज बेस्ड ऑन दिस अमेरिकन कॉलेज ऑफ रोमेटोलॉजी क्राइटेरिया यू कैन डायग्नोज इनमें से कोई दो और मोर क्राइटेरिया होंगे ओनली देन यू कैन डायग्नोज एस वेगनस यूरिनरी सेडमेंट्स मिल सकते हैं चेस्ट एक्सरे में अबनॉर्मेलिटीज मिलेंगी नेजर इन्फ्लोमेशन मिलेगा एंड बायोप्सी में ऑफ कोर्स ग्रैनुलोमा और आर्टरी इन्वॉल्व या वेसल इन्वॉल्व तो इनमें से कोई भी दो क्राइटेरिया होंगे तो आप वेगनर्स ट्रीटमेंट मैंने आपको आया स्टेरॉइड बहुत कॉमनली दिए जाते हैं स्टेरॉइड इज द मेन ड्रग ऑफ वेगनर्स आप ऑब्वियसली यू विल रेफर हिम टू एन इम्यूनोलॉजिस्ट और इमेटोलॉजिस्ट फॉर ट्रीटमेंट so prednisolone is given in 0.5 to 1 mg is the side effects steroids we all know what are the side effects bone diabetes hypertension eye involvement if you not treat some cases can be lethal and other immunosuppressive drugs aajkal hum ye tnf alpha antagonist bhi dete hain like infliximab etanercept but i discussed with the immunologists today itself generally wo ye drugs jo hai रिफ्रैक्टरी केसेस के लिए रखते हैं लाइक पेशेंट रिस्पॉन्ड नहीं कर रहा है इम्यूनोसप्रेसिव ड्रग्स को पेशेंट रिस्पॉन्ड नहीं कर रहा स्टेरॉइड्स को यू गिव दीज ड्रग्स नॉट ओनली एक्सपेंसिव है बट इनके खुद के बहुत साइड इफेक्ट्स हैं इनफैक्ट उन्होंने बताया कि लॉट ऑफ पेशेंट्स हैं जिनको ये टी एल एफ एंटागोनिस देते हैं टूबोकुलोसिस डेवलप हो जाता है सो हर पेशेंट में आपको ये टी एन एफ एल्फा एंटागोनिस नहीं देना ये जो ड्रग है कोट्राइमोक्सिजोल ये कुछ स्टडीज में प्रूपन है कि इसका भी हेल्पफुल इफेक्ट है अगर आप स्टार्ट करें वेगनर्स में वाई बिकॉज स्टाफ ऑरियस बहुत कॉमनली इन लॉर्ड ऑफ पेशेंट स्टाफ ऑरियस कॉलोनाइजेशन इज वेरी कॉमन इन वेगनर्स राइट सो ओट्राइम ऑक्सोजोल ऑल्सो हैज अ रोल बट यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर स्टेरॉइड आर दी मेन ड्रग डिस्ट दैट कीप ऑन मॉनिटरिंग सी एंका वाई वी गेट टू नो हाउ आर यू हाउ इज द पेशेंट रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू दी ड्रग So keep on monitoring C anka. If C anka is going down, it is a good sign that yes, the patient is responding to your treatment. How do you treat the nose? What can the ENT surgeon do with these patients? 
Yes, you've referred the patient to immunologist for steroids and immunosuppressive. What do you do? Do your part. Give the patient good nasal douching. Do not take the patient for functional endoscopic sinus surgery, please. Give the patient on intranasal steroids, nasal lubricants, and endoscopic sinus surgery only in selected cases. With selected cases. Suppose the patient is having very high nasal, very acute nasal obstruction. You can debride a little bit and give him some airway, but Besides that, please start him on steroids also. And this elastic septal button, a lot of studies, they have given this septal button. But in that patient also, there was remission. Do not try to repair the septal perforation. Yes, you can use septal button in some cases. Rhinoplasty is done at very later stages. The patient has gone into remission. He is troubled with the cosmetic deformities. You can do rhinoplasty. Do not try to give growths because you see there is serious otitis media. Don't try to give because it's a systemic disorder. Then right? don't give growths. What do you do about the hearing loss? Give patient hearing aids. Do conservative. Please be conservative. Of course, there is subnotic stenosis and there is strider. You can try this endoluminal balloon dilatation or you can give intralesional steroids. Laser can be done in certain cases. Yeah, so basically the point is that uh, we come in at the initial stage when we have to, when the patient has a nasal presentation and we have to help in making a diagnosis. And then in the late stage when there are maybe some sequelae or uh, the patient has this uh, depressed nose or uh, other things, then for symptomatic and supportive management uh, in those cases. But this active Surgery is not to be done. Management is along with the physician. And uh, later, if we have to correct some cosmetic deformity or uh, some persistent sequelae, then our role again comes. But uh, mostly, we get very few cases in that remission uh, stage when they request any surgery or any surgical intervention. Okay, so I think um, so we uh, we stop. I think over here, and uh, once again, I will thank you, uh, Seema, for uh, excellent uh, presentation. Thank you. Okay.